face. is so pretty. So, what have you been up to? Well, I've been doing a lot of designing. I'm also also writing, producing. I'm also a GSK as my ambassador. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yes, girl. <laughs> winning. So yeah, I've been doing a lot, but mostly on the designing so side much. of things. Okay, but. I'm also recording my album, so oh, I'm pretty excited about that. It's like this, it's like that, no matter what you do, but people then go talk. You haven't heard the voice of Mesha in such a long time, so it's overdue. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, so today we're doing a special on Tea Time um, with fashion expert, fashion designer, mm -hmm. model, serial entrepreneur Mo Cheda. Um, and we're so happy to have you on. We've got lots to talk about and catch up on. So I'm just going to bring you over to the table so you can meet the rest of my co-anchors. Um, seems like we're going to have a really Hi interesting guys. chat today. So Mo, thanks so much for sitting down to talk to us. We've been looking forward to having you. Um, so like I said to you earlier, we're just going to have a chat about what you've been up to um, and how everything's been going. When I started music, my parents knew that, okay, this is what she wants to do. So I was very grounded. So I, I had boundaries. So I, I didn't take some shows. I wouldn't do some interviews. I didn't take some endorsements, not because I didn't want to, but because of my strong upbringing Brilliant. and background. So I always had that, but I never referred to myself as Mo Cheddar. I've always known that there's a thin line, like there's just a difference. Mo Cheddar, the brand, and Mo, the sister, the friend, the daughter is very, yeah. very different. So I don't get it twisted all, all up in my head. So I know it's work, I know it's a passion and I just do it and I just did it and yeah. How did you um, come up with this name Mo Cheddar? How did you put it up together? Okay I'm very um, I'm very in the moment and I'm a very like whatever is meant to be is meant to be very spiritual let it lead by the spirit kind of person so my name was always Mo okay. and people would ask me Mo what? Mm -hmm. And back then there was Mo, Mo, Mo the singer in America yeah. Yeah. and then Auntie Moabudu yeah. started her show, so they'll be like, Moabudu? And I'll be like, no, <laughs> no. just Mo. Oh, yeah. So I started rapping, mm -hmm. and every time I wrote rap, yeah. I would say Mo Cheddar. So when I say Mo Cheddar, flow better, do better, get her. Right. So, you, you know, it just used to flow. And I went to an interview one day, and this guy just goes, so now we're going to welcome Mo Cheddar. And it kind of stuck. <laughs> and I'm like, Cheddar! The thing is, being in the music industry, I wasn't treated as a child star, never that. I was treated as an adult. I feel like my greatest moment would be when I won the Channel O Award. Yeah, because I, the not the, I was already boss now. By that time, I was like, ha, by that time, I was a fast star. So I was like, okay, yeah, I do this. I win, I win. But the Channel Award, I went as an underdog, you know. The hotel was tiny weeny. Every other person had like a makeup artist. Oh. I wasn't given a makeup artist. I was just this artist that just went and tried to find her way. I wasn't like giving. No, because I was still like, I was like, hey, this is how it is. It was my first major award. You go for a award show, they provide you with limousines. I wasn't given one. I took a cab. It's time for my category, and I'm like, I'll never be called. Like, I didn't even think I'll be called. I just sat down and I heard my name. I was like, they're like, wow. like so stand up. Yes. Like yeah. No, I. It. You don't understand because I. I just didn't want to break my own heart. So I was like, so I just sat down. Like I'm just here for the ride. You know, looking at all the stars. I'll never forget. And they, if you see where I was, <laughs> I was so far. <laughs> they pushed me far, far before I came there. I think they went on a break and had to come back. That's how far I was. And I had to walk. I was shaky. I uh, know. I, I still think about it. that moment made me realize that you know what you, you could actually do this. Okay, now let me tell you why the long break. So this is a 12-year-old 
um, at 15, breakout star, starts performing, has school to deal with, because has a mom <laughs> to deal with. And um, I traveled around the world. I was barely sleeping. I had no friends anymore. And I graduated at 21 from the university. And I literally just sat down and realized that I can't do this. I literally just sat down and went, no, I just want to sleep. I had a show and I'm like, can't I sleep? <laughs> you know, that's just how it came to me. And I just said, no, I just said, I'm going to go on a break. It was war. It was crazy. Everybody thought, you know, I was going to go to another record label. Everybody, but I just thought, you know what? I just need a break. A break. I don't want this anymore. I mean, you've moved on from, you know, taking your well-deserved break and that kind of thing. And um, you've had what you mentioned as a 12 year kind of 12 year period. So you went to university, you've graduated now. Um, and obviously we're now into the world of social media. Um, and we've kind of, you've, you've now kind of broken out again on social media for different reasons. I mean, I think, like I mentioned earlier, I think you've, I consider you a serial kind of entrepreneur. Um, so, I mean, you've been doing a lot of kind of uh, beauty stuff, fashion stuff, um, advocacy. You know, you've been very vocal about, you know, really important power. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> the future is female. Um, absolutely, yes, it is. I just wanted to speak about something um, a little, a bit more serious um, that you've been quite vocal about. Um, and I'm glad that we started with your whole journey as being a kind of child star and that kind of thing. How do you think that influenced, I mean, I mean you've been very vocal about yeah. mental health awareness and your kind of personal experience with, the, with mental health, yeah, with your own personal struggles. How do you think being a child star, or do you think being a child star affected your mental state as you grew up? No, it didn't, because I feel like what affected me was the fear of what other people said was failure because when i decided to go on that break social media came but when i was a star there was no social media like when i started out there was no twitter there was no instagram, instagram. so you you had only like conium you had like weekly magazine <laughs> so you did something on tuesday it's on in the magazines next week next tuesday week. you're like you're like over that and now there's social media, you say one thing, mm -hmm. they pick on you, you say another thing, they pick on you. So it's, that affected me. Mm -hmm. And what other people termed as failure. Because I feel like I felt like I failed a lot of people. Because people are picking on you, you don't do this anymore, you're a failure, you're old school, you're a throwback. I'm like, after everything I've done. And my parents are so savage. You know who I am? And you know, you, you people don't say hi to you anymore. And the thing is, you don't get to do the cool things. Because don't forget, I started this out very early. So to me, this was normal. That was the life. People screaming, people clapping for you, people you having your way, people giving you stuff. It, it was just what I knew. And I honestly felt like that was life. Yeah. You know, people were just nice. You just enter a room, everybody's like, yeah. and I'm like, okay. So to go from that to you enter a room and everybody's like, Wow. So I'm like, I'm like, ah, is this life? Just like, I wasn't getting invited to events anymore. In fact, there was a time I called um, a friend of mine who was an artist, a very good friend of mine. We recorded a couple of songs, and I'm like, can I get a, a ticket to your show? It was a very big show at a cool hotel. Kim Kardashian was around. And he's like, no, you can't. I just can't give you any tickets. And I had called one of my friends as an actress. And she had just told me, they just called to beg me to come. Like, there are like so many tickets, the seats are empty, I have to come. You don't understand. I lost my mind. I cried. And this was my friend. So how did you deal with it? All of that negativity? I got depressed, obviously. Ob Duh. <laughs> Haven't you heard? <laughs> but yes, I did. No, I thought this was prior to the depression, you know. This was the cause of the depression. So it led to it, and I let that get to me. Now that I'm older, obviously, I know that. Who cares what people yeah. think? I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. On to the next okay. one. I'm glad you actually mentioned this, because I know Lakbe has some questions that she wants to ask you about this depression thing. So yeah, no, no, it's, sure. it's not a depression thing. thing. Okay. It's depression. It's, it's depression. depression. Okay. It's like cancer, you know? You don't say depression thing, thing. cancer thing, yeah. <laughs> How did you go from dealing with all of that drama to actually sitting down and saying hang on a second i need help yeah obviously you cry a lot and you 
I felt like I wasn't living anymore. You know, you're in your body, but you're not in your body, and people are leaving, and people... I don't know how to describe it, because mm. talking about it would mean me having to go back, back there, there, which I can't. But the easiest way I can say it is that I'd had it for over four years, and I was like 25, 26, and I was un un unproductive. I'll go weeks without taking a shower, without leaving my bed. My mom would be crying, why are you in your room? Come outside. I'm like, I can't come outside. I can't do anything. You know, everybody's around me. Like, are you okay? My eyes were always swollen. I will go weeks without sleeping, I'll go days without eating. And that's the numbness and yeah. the kind of, I'm just existing. Y yeah, you're yeah. just existing. And yeah. then I'd always make sure I kept up appearances because, you know, maybe I'll have an event or I'll have a birthday. I'll make up and I'll make sure I post it for Instagram so people won't think I was missing. Yeah, I, yeah, I was trying to mask everything. I tried to be brave for my boyfriend, tried to be brave for my mom, but I was empty inside. And... Obviously, I started having suicidal thoughts. I won't really call it suicidal thoughts because I was like, everything in my life is great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was actually was having suicidal thoughts. And I'll be like, how would I kill myself? I started thinking of ways to kill myself. Like, okay, how am I going to live this life? And I'll think, okay, what will happen to my mom? What will happen to my boyfriend? What happened to my sisters? And I'm like, I can't do it because of them. So I'll tell you that because I had such a good support system, I wasn't able to go through with it. But I'll say if I didn't, I probably would have. And I ask myself every time, there are some people that don't have that good support system. And you're strong, you're brave, but you need to get help. And it just got to a point where I was like, I need to get help. I spoke to so many people around me and it was like, I don't understand how you feel. I was just about to ask you that. How did you feel when people, when you spoke to people and told them how you felt? I started and Googling it. And yeah. they, no, they were dis they would just be like, it's life. You, you just have to. Because I remember you saying Yeah, that. like, you're, no, I even went on a three day fasting one time, dry fasting, because I'm like, Jesus, you need to heal me. Because I knew it was depression. I Googled it, I read about yeah. it. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll wake up early, I'll take walks. I started working out a lot. There was a time I was obsessed with working out. But the darkness was still there. And I'm like, I can't cope anymore. I'll have on season, off season, obviously. You have like months of Episodes. Yeah. dark times. And then you have like two great great months and you're happy again and your brain is functioning and then I go back down again so it was up down up down up down and it got to a point where I was like you know what I, I, I honestly cannot do this anymore and I need help I didn't tell anybody I had um I called a doctor because I, I had a blog mochera.co and I had a doctor on the blog so I called her and I'm like oh a friend of mine has been suffering from depression for a while she asking needs for a friend. <laughs> yeah I'm asking <laughs> I'm so she knew she was like rolling her eyes like really my friend needs help and she's like you know what I'm gonna send you a doctor's number give you know she needs help I have a friend that did this she's fine now and I called the ther I had the therapist's number for like months. I had it for like four or five months and I never called her. And there was a night I was driving back from my sister's house and I was just crying. And I called her and I was just crying. Like, and she's like, I know you'll be fine. And I was still pretty ashamed and I couldn't go to her office. And I'm like, you know what? I need a private consultation. So she came in for a private consultation at my office. And she's like, you are going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Like, just know you are not alone. And she's telling me there are so many people that have this. There's so many people that suffer from this. She tries to explain it to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm fine. And then I started therapy. I started seeing her like four times a week. Went down to three, went down to two, went down to once a month, went down to phone calls. And I got better when I started CBT. So I started therapy. I saw a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I ran tests, I did thyroid tests. I went through so many tests to find out where the imbalance was from and I was diagnosed. What was the kind of, um, kind of help and advice you got from other people before you kind of saw, you know, saw into your own self? There were two types of people. There were people that, that were going through it. I, I found like two friends that were also depressed. So we'll be like, this is depression, right? They're like, yes, it is. So we'll call each other when we had meltdowns and we'll prep each other up, like get back up, you need to shower and we'll check on each other. We're like three friends. And I'll be like, this is what is wrong with me. And then I had another friend that'll just be like, what's always wrong with you? You're always boring. Like, 
I don't understand. And I'm like, you don't understand. I'm not happy. They're like, why, why would you be happy? You just got paid this for doing this. You just got this endorsement. You just got, you, your life is fantastic. And I'm like, I don't know. But the thing is, you just need to get medical help. It's like having malaria or having a headache and saying you just want to sleep through it. And I mean, uh, you know, I mean, more than anyone else, that the suicide rate at the moment, globally, not just here, has been on the increase at the yeah. moment. I mean, there's been um, a lot of celebrities, and it's always, it always tends to be people that have everything that everyone claims to want. Yeah. Kate Spade, yeah. And everyone seems to think that, well, you know, why, why, why are they depressed? Because they have money, they have fame, they have family, they've got everything that everybody kind of seeks to get. So why do you think there's like this kind of stigma around? you know, just mental health in general, because these people could talk to anyone, they could get mental I feel like the brain is a very sensitive topic. It's delicate, yeah. Do you get what I mean? And everybody's like, but like I said in my Instagram post, I'm like, and that's what my doctor said. She's like, your brain is an organ. Like your kidneys feel, right? Mm -hmm. Same way. Your liver can feel, right? Your brain can feel. Yeah. And what you need to understand is, anxiety and depression i don't know about mental other mental illnesses but it's caused by it's a it's like how do, how do i describe it it's a lack of neurosomes it's a lack of a particular like um what do you call it's like when you lack vitamin d exactly so you lack that vitamin and so you're unable to bounce back from certain things. So it's like a deficiency. So it's not necessarily, and it could be triggered. So when you see a picture of someone that has mental illness, and you see a picture of someone that has a stable brain, brain yeah. it's very it's different. different. Yeah. So you can see that there are certain light bulbs in the anxiety and depression's brains person's off. And then there are some on the normal brain's mm. on. So I've I, seen that picture, yeah. Really yeah, amazing. I posted the picture. So you realize that you're unable, you are just unable to get out of that pit. So a normal person that doesn't suffer from anxiety or depression, for, for example, you could lose a friend. You cry for a bit, but your mind just tells you she's in a better place, she'll be fine. But a depressed person cannot come awesome. out from that hole. You just can't see past, oh my God, this person is dead. How would I survive? I need to die as well. You cannot, you don't have the necessary supply of um, of the neurosomes to help you get back up. So yeah, that's why you need help to train. It's like working out as well. It's like saying, okay, you know what, let's run five, five, five kilometers. Come on, you get, nobody's gonna do that if you're not exercising, if you're not doing that very often. Or you say, okay, let's go rock climbing or let's go, let's go swimming. Mm -hmm. No, I can't. I have By the way, yeah. swimming is amazing for depression as well, actually. If you swim in the in cold seas, it's actually meant to bring those neurosomes back. Yeah, no, it's been medically tested and stuff like that. I know turmeric is nice and I've been sharing like um, turmeric. I shared it on Instagram because I have a lot of people sending me DMs. So there's this turmeric lemonade you can make. Turmeric is very, very good for your brain. So you could do that, take walks prep yourself up I talk to myself all the time because then you have voices when there's you have depression you have these voices that kind of talk you down so you have to learn to talk yourself so early in the morning I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like you go girl you could do girl you do girl yeah I'm like yes I look in the mirror and I'm like girl you cute yeah so it's just knowing that I'm I'm good enough and between God and myself I'm all right. But what I'm doing is with a couple of my friends, we're trying to see how we can organize therapy, free therapy sessions for a couple of people that need to speak to a professional. So, because therapy can be a bit expensive. So I'm trying to figure out how I can help, how I can speak to more doctors, and how, I can, how, can, how they can come in and help more people. But what I'm doing on my own now is, if you go on my Instagram page and you check my insights every morning on my Insta stories, I do this, what's your word of affirmation for the day? I drop tips on how to survive, how to live, how to cope through depression and how to try and get out, get out of it basically. And how to kind of live your best life. Like when you have anxiety, instead of breaking down and having to worry, you understand that, you know what, I'm, this is a panic attack, it's an anxiety attack. It's not real, it's in your mind, stay strong, you are going to be okay and try and distract yourself from it. I feel like yeah, there's a lot of knowledge in just knowing 
All right, let's move on to other things. Let's talk about your um, fashion brand. Is that still up and running or? No, I'm yes? wearing Mocha that I always. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us what's new with that. What's new with that is it's another thing that I love because I didn't feel like I was, because the music started feeling very, there was pressure. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of pressure to record the next album, drop the next single, be as hot as the next yeah, artist. Awesome, yeah. But with the fashion, I just do me. I just have fun. I have the most amazing women shop for me. Mm -hmm. I handle customer care a lot of times. I love to design. I love to go fabric shopping. It's something that comes easily for me. My tailors drive me nuts. My <laughs> staff drive me nuts. But it's, it's fun, mm -hmm. and I'm just... Living. What do you find fun? The designing, the business Everything. side of it. Everything. To ask, you know, because I was speaking to a few people and they said, I don't know, you can also correct me if we're wrong, you know, that um, perhaps it's a bit elitist. Is that correct? Because um, they can't see it readily in the mass market. Is that the case or you've targeted it for everyone? Well, mass market, I can't afford to get it in the mass market. Oh, I see. And because for now, I, I personally like exclusive pieces. And what's beautiful about Mocha.co is we do not make more than six to ten pieces of each design mm. so you're sure you're getting something like top notch your short production premium. is premium on point mm. so and i don't really like mass market and okay. it's something i'm looking to do in the future so that comes at a, at a high price then it does yes. and so i don't have that much so money right then, to it's put into it's fashion <laughs> yet how are all these other things affecting your music fan base because i'm sure a lot of people are still looking forward to hear something from well me. i did drop a song like two years ago i dropped survive oh, yes, you did. i did drop survive i did drop left let me love you i do drop music here and there but what people uh need to understand is music is not what we have made it like music is not dropping singles every month that's not so but that's I'm I'm old school. I'm young, but I'm still old school. I'm still of the school of thought that where you have to create music. I'm not in just the, like <laughs> drop the single. For me, it's I love to do music. I have over 500 songs in the studio. Like I just record. I go to the studio all the time. I record music in my spare time. I don't feel any pressure to want to make money off it. I do it because I want to. And when I'm ready. I'm gonna put it out. I'm working on a rap album as well. Okay, oh, I like to jump on that. Any special features on Yeah. <laughs> that you can't talk about, that you can talk about. I'm going to feature. <laughs> oh, you don't want to say. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> Chillin' I'm happy, living life so good, now so we supposed to be here. They do my dumb, bless me, yo. That's why nobody fit to test me, yo. Who are the people that sort of give you inspiration though in the fashion industry? Because like you said earlier, you know, you, it comes naturally to you, but... Courtney, Courtney Kardashian, Miroslava Duma. Why do you say Courtney? I, um, well, sorry there, but I, I don't know, people are different, but... Courtney, I like her style. I love Courtney. Because Very most people cool. say Kim, that's why I'm surprised you said Courtney. I love Courtney. I love Courtney style. I love um, Kendall Jenner style. style. Very, very Zendaya style yeah. on point. Um, there's this blogger called Miroslava Duma. I'm obsessed with Instagram. Yeah, models. Right? Like, obsessed. Bonang obviously has beautiful red carpet style. But most of all, I, I think I inspire myself a lot of times. I'm very like, love me. I mean, what, what do you um, want people to expect from you this year? I mean, it's a huge year for you. You're yeah. married. Um, I no, I am married. Oh, you are I am married. Because I was Double bring that band. Up. Let's talk about Double. Yeah. <laughs> Double. I'm somebody's Imagine. wife. Yes. Yes. Show them. So yes. What, do we, what should we expect from each other in for the remainder of 2018 and a bit of 2019? So I'm working a lot on a lot, on a lot of, a lot, lot, lot of women empowerment like ideas shows on how to help young girls because i feel like young girls of now the social media generation need 
a role model. They need role models to show them that, you know what, you can be cool and still keep your clothes on. You can be cool and still say no to that boy. You can be cool and be your own boss and let them understand that there's nothing as great as spending your own money. Making it can be difficult, but spending it and, and having it at your own time and teaching young women how to make that money and be self-sufficient yes you just need to be your own boss basically all right then so let's um before we round up let's just quickly talk about the love of your life how how you guys met because you know Are you you're really interested to Kubo? <laughs> yes that's what i do that's my job you know so i wanted to ask okay, so we met through osage yeah osage was managing Wiz, Wiz kid at that point in time and she just came to me and she's like there's this guy i want you to see and there was facebook so i'm like hmm? What's his name? And she says his name. I'm like, okay, show me his picture. And I see his picture and I'm like, no, I don't like him. He was in a picture with his friend. I'm like, I like his friend. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know his friend. This is him. I'm like, no, no. And she gave him my number. And this dude didn't call me for over three months. And I really didn't care because I didn't want to meet this guy. And he calls me and I'm like, oh. Okay, he has a nice voice. <laughs> and we just, we became, we started dating like four days after. We no way. I swear. <laughs> like I told, I told him I love you like six days after I met Seriously? him. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. When he called me, it was, he knew what he wanted. It wasn't like, I just want to be your friend. It was like, oh, how are you? I got your number from a tag. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. And I feel like, oh, how's your day? It was so mature and it wasn't like, yeah, it was so not. And I was like sprung and my baby sister was sitting close to me and I was like, <laughs> and like he didn't really ask me out like a month after in April I'm like what are we and he's like you're my girlfriend and I'm like ah! and I was telling you oh but I have a boyfriend I have a boyfriend and yeah. it's just been and I understand you know from what I've heard that he was your first he was your first boyfriend as well is that correct yeah oh and you married your first boyfriend that's huh? amazing that's yes Do you have any final words of advice or anything that we think that we haven't covered already that you might want to add? No, I'll just like for every young girl out there, you know, you have, we have such a long life to live and I feel like people put pressure on us as human beings. So what do you want to do with your life? What's next? What's your plan? It's okay not to have a plan. It's okay to live each day as it comes. It's okay to do what you like. If you love cookies, start baking, start selling. Like if you love tea, brew your tea, sell teacups. Like you don't need to be in that fancy office. You don't need, this is if a lawyer here, if I was one of the people that worked on my legal battle with my old record label, he was one of the lawyers that worked on that. This is him living his life. He's now on a TV show. Like nobody says this is how it should be. And have fun. You only have this one life to live and nothing is worth stealing your joy. Thank you so much. It's been great having you here. Um, and I've really enjoyed the chat. It's yes. been really, really heartwarming. Um, I wish you all the best in the future and everything you've so got planned. I. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Tea Time on our special today with Had Mo Cheddar having a conversation about what she's been up to. It's been really, really fun having you here today. Thanks for joining us. Um, and catch us again this afternoon on Tea Time for another episode.